Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we have another full and very interesting program before us today. And in a moment, um, I'll hand over ch to uh, um, Jürgen Czernohorski, who will say a little more about um, work being done in infrastructure in the city of Vienna. Um, but I've been invited to say a few words of reflection before we embark on the second day of this conference. Um, and being given the opportunity to speak on the second day um, is a privilege because one can um, adapt and adjust in relation to uh, the tenor of the discussion the day before. And so I spent yesterday um, rethinking the direction of what I was going to say this morning. During um, the morning sessions, I was sketching out a series of um, research challenges for the ISNGI community, which we might consider focusing upon. Um, and of course, identifying research questions is the bread and butter of researchers like ourselves. Um, and there's a great deal that is unresolved in our research field. Um, but then in the afternoon discussion, I could uh, hardly contain myself um, when the scope of infrastructure systems was extended um, wider still and wider. Um, as systems thinkers, we like embracing interdependencies and interactions with the super system. Um, but one of the principles of systems theory is uh, Ashby's law of requisite variety. Um, make your system as complex as possible, but no more complex, um, or as complex as necessary. Um, so saying that infrastructure is everything in a coupled technological, human, and natural system um, doesn't seem to me to be particularly constructive. Um, so over dinner, I embarked on a journey with the people unfortunate enough to be sitting near me um, to, uh, to work on the definition of infrastructure. And um, Patrick and I made some progress. Um, I, we identified that the approach um, adopted by Infrastructure UK and in the National Infrastructure Plan, I would label as the um, enumeration approach to infrastructure definition. So um, simply come up with a, uh, a list of entities um, of the services that you're talking about, um, energy, transport, water, flood defense, waste, um, and by fiat, more or less, um, that becomes your definition of a uh, infrastructure system. But um, listing the hardware um, seems to be quite unsatisfactory. Um, defining infrastructure in terms of the essential services it provides um, is more attractive because it admits the possibility of substitution um, of the means of service provision. Um, we can provide heating services with electricity or gas. We can provide communications by post or email. Um, but the problem then becomes um, one of defining infrastructure services compared to all of the other services in the economy. Um, one might instinctively think of infrastructure as being essential services, um, but then how do we categorize essential? And there are a whole bunch of things which infrastructure does, um, like um, entertainment or recreation, which are um, discretionary rather than um, essential. Um, and so the conversation went on. Um, and I think it's an important conversation um, because as a community, we do need to define the subject of our inquiry, what we have in common. Um, but nonetheless, even though definitional, definitional issues are important, they're not the most important question that we might seek to address. So in the final few minutes that I've got available, I'd like to seek to address a much more important question, um, which is why do we care about infrastructure? Why is it the most um, important thing that most people 
in this room are working on. Um, and I think in trying to answer those questions, we may stumble across um, both some research challenges and maybe some hints at a definition of what we mean by infrastructure. The first, and I think the most striking reason why we care about infrastructure um, is because it's a public good. These are services um, that we practically all share in one way and another. Um, a public good is non-excludable. Um, we can't exclude anyone from benefiting from it. Um, we can, in principle, think of ways in which we might restrict access to electricity or water or road space. Um, but uh, in practice, we almost take it as a right that we have that access. Um, and in that sense, infrastructure um, becomes part of the shared public discourse. It's a shared public sphere that we care about um, and upon which our individual behaviors um, have collective impacts, be that by driving recklessly or by flushing contaminants down the toilet. The quality um, of these shared infrastructure services is in many ways what defines us as a modern society. Um, though Infrastructure UK is studious in not setting out what the vision for national infrastructure is, we don't do planning is the mantra that we get from the Treasury. Um, it is implicitly quite clear what the vision for national infrastructure is. Um, uh, that might be articulated in reductive terms as a higher World Economic Forum ranking for the infrastructure systems in the UK or wherever you may happen to live. Um, but less superficially, I think it means um, at least the following things. So um, high levels of reliability of our electricity, gas, water, telecommunications networks at an affordable price. Um, a reliable, comfortable, and extensive public transport system, a highway network that doesn't suffer from levels of congestion that are an obstacle to business and trade, digital communications and computation services that enable um, the nation to be a front runner um, in digital services and innovation, Steadily reducing carbon emissions from the energy and transportation sectors um, on track to meet the UK's ambitious carbon targets, um, which just last week were underlined by David Cameron in New York. Um, and environmental regulation in the design and operation of these systems, which means that we can all enjoy wholesome air, water and soil. All of those things underpin a competitive modern economy and any notion of the good life um, in which we can enjoy <coughs> excuse me, economic and social opportunities, a biodiverse and thriving ecosystem, and a stable climate. Of course, there are opportunity costs in infrastructure investment, um, and Gary Brodich has been absolutely right to point these out. One can over as well as under invest, um, and the mantra of infrastructure provision should always be spend wisely. Um, and the reason why we're so concerned about spending wisely is not only because infrastructure is hugely expensive stuff, um, so, by the way, it can only usually be provided by social organization. That's the public good property of infrastructure. Um, but also because of the potential for lock-in of patterns of development. The potential for lock-in derives from um, the large scale of infrastructure investments and their literally concrete spatial characteristics. Um, Infrastructure and the built environment co-evolve with one another um, in ways that can be extremely difficult to reverse. Um, the highway pattern um, in Los Angeles follows the layout of the um, long-disappeared Pacific Southwest Railway. 
um, we balk at how costly it would be to retrofit dual sewer systems, um, even though the, we recognize the benefit in environmental and treatment cost terms um, that that would be, provide com compared to the combined sewer systems we've been bequeathed by our forebears. Um, and most urgently of all, we recognize what a huge challenge decarbonization of our electricity system and electrification of our energy system um, will be given the legacy of infrastructure we have at the moment. So, in short, infrastructure is the most significant barrier and opportunity to transition to a stable modern economy. Um, that's why I've sought to put infrastructure at the heart of the research program in Oxford's Environmental Change Institute. And we're actually woefully underserved by theory that can help us to make the right choices to spend wisely. Um, microeconomic theory is well developed, and yesterday Richard Denerfville did a wonderful job in um, highlighting how it is important it is to have proper consideration of uncertainty and optionality um, in economic appraisal. Um, and as we put projects together into portfolios and pathways, we come to recognize how benefits accrue in a nonlinear way. But at the macro scale, we simply see infrastructure in the lumped capital category as a factor of production. Um, and as an economist, a non-economist, excuse me, um, that seems to me to be woefully inadequate. Um, it doesn't recognize the dual roles of infrastructure as enabling production, for example, via energy and water supplies, but also um, in reducing the costs of trade and stimulating agglomeration and innovation um, via transportation and communications networks. So it seems to me that we need a much richer, what I might label as mesoscale theory of infrastructure um, that recognizes spatiality, networks, asset life cycles, um, but extends beyond narrow project by project evaluation of benefits and externalities. I find it hard to imagine a future that we might consider as being um, a good life in which we live peacefully, productively, sustainably, without um, transformed infrastructure being an essential component of that, albeit a largely invisible ingredient. And that's not only because provision of infrastructure services themselves are so central to any concept of the good life, um, but also that unless we can prove our collective and long-term decision-making capability in that particular public sphere that we label as infrastructure, um, we likely can't manage it in a host of other contexts either, um, which are no less important. So in that sense, infrastructure is not only society's backbone and our nervous system, um, it's also a test case of our capacity to make the right choices. And that, I would contend, is why infrastructure is so important. Thank you.